In today's video I'm going to show you how to paint an Alex Ross inspired Superman bust. The model was sculpted by Luciano Berutti. The link to his CG Trader shop is in the description. For this project I just printed the base plate with my Creality Ender 3. All the rest was printed on my Elegoo Saturn. What I did do with the head sculpt is I went into Blender and gave Superman's face a small jawbone correction, since in the original model he was chewing bubblegum a tiny bit too much for my taste. The bust comes in 17 parts and printing it in quarter scale took a total of 8 prints, 1150 grams of Anycubic standard resin and 58 hours of printing time. I took my water bucket sandy and started to sand all the parts. I had some problems fitting together the keys, so I just cut them off with a clipper. That's why the inside of the model looks so butchered. Then I took a two-part epoxy glue, glued the parts together and secured them in place with crepe tape, until the epoxy was cured. And for small parts I used super glue with an accelerator spray. To get rid of the seam lines I used Aves epoxy sculpt and sculpting tools. And after it was cured, I sanded it where necessary. Then I took the rattle can and primed Superman. And while you watch me do that, I would really appreciate a like, a comment and a subscription if you liked the video. And when you want to know what comes next, check my Instagram, link is in the description. The FDM parts usually give you a harder time in post-processing than the resin parts. FDM is much harder to sand, so I used about 10 coats of spray filler and wood filler as well until all the print imperfections were gone. And then it was time for the fun part, painting. After rattle canning the base in black, I used Vallejo Glorious Gold for the whole base. By the way, the airbrush I'm using is equipped with a 0.8mm nozzle and I'm using about 15 psi. For Superman's skin I started with two coats of Pale Flash. Then I started to apply red, blue and yellow washes to tint the Pale Flash, which gives it more variation and makes the whole skin color look more realistic. For the lips I used bloody red mixed with a lot of glaze medium. From my experience it's better to use multiple transparent coats than one thick coat that is too opaque. And when I'm talking of experience I literally mean only the three or four projects I finished before this one. So there is not really much of experience there yet. So maybe let me know in the comments how you paint your model's lips. After I was satisfied with the lips I painted the eyes with ghost grey. But because I was too scared to finish the eyes and mess everything I have done so far up, I started blocking out the hair with model color black. For that I thinned down the color with water so that the color difference between the skin and the hair is not too harsh and he looks like he's wearing a wig. Then I use a tiny brush and try to paint individual hair strands for a smooth gradient between skin and hairline. And the same applies for the eyebrows. Now I've learned from my mistake with Batman's 5 o'clock shadow, where he looked like he was working in a coal mine, so this time I didn't use black, but green and blue pastel colors. And with that I got a pretty good 5 o'clock shadow effect. If you are wondering where the eyes are coming from, I initially tried it with my eye decals, but that didn't work as I wanted, so I removed them. And I have no other chance than to paint them later. I also used the same pastel color to slightly tint the area under Superman's eyes and with red pastel I slightly tinted the knuckles. Then I went back with black and finished the eyebrows and the hair. But since I was still afraid to finish the eyes, I went over to Superman's suit. I like to work from the inside to the outside, which makes masking a bit easier. I wrapped the skin parts with magic dough and then I went in with ultramarine blue as a base color for the suit. Then I primed Superman's logo with air model gray as a base for model air yellow. But the yellow didn't turn out as vibrant as I wanted it, so I wrapped it up in magic dough again primed it with white and then used gold yellow. And that was the look I had in mind. Then it got a little bit more fiddly since I had to mask the yellow parts 
to then paint the remaining part of his logo with Model Air Red. But first I base coated it with white to make sure to get an even vibrant red. Now with masking you obviously always have spots that either didn't get paint where they actually should have or you have spots where you got paint that was not supposed to be there. So I fixed the red and yellow parts with the paintbrush and afterwards I had perfect and crisp color edges. Then I worked my way out and used ghost gray for his shirt. And again after unmasking I cleaned up the edges with a paintbrush. For his suit I mixed cold grey and black, loaded up the airbrush and that's what it looks like. Then I masked everything off to paint the shirt color, again using ghost grey. And cleaning up the edges with a paintbrush. For the belt buckle I used silver and for the belt itself black. Then I realized I missed one seam line so I went in again with epoxy sculpt to fix it. And then I base coated the tie with model air light grey. I painted the pocket square in ghost grey and then I used masking tape to create an even and parallel stripe pattern to the tie. Wrapped everything up in crepe tape and kitchen foil and painted it black. And since you can also see the back side of the tie at some angles, I also masked and airbrushed that. By the way, for this project I used a coat of Montana Matte Varnish, which is a varnish with UV protection, after every color I applied. This not only helps to protect the resin and your color, but it also makes cleanup easier because you don't risk to scratch the previous paint layer if you are working on the next one. Then I painted the suit buttons with the same black just to have a bit more of color variation. For Superman's fingernails I used a mix of pale flash and red, thinned down with water. And after that was dry I applied a coat of gloss varnish. And what I left till the very end, since I was afraid to mess it up, were the eyes. After base coating the eyes with bone white, I used electric blue to paint the iris with a triple O paintbrush and a 10 times magnifying glass on my head. And then I painted two black dots. Because the electric blue was a little bit too vibrant for my taste, I went in again with a tiny amount of ultramarine blue that I also used for the suit. And after applying a drop of gloss varnish, my first ever human pair of eyes were done. And for the very last step I wasn't satisfied with what was supposed to be matte varnish, so I used Green Stuff Max Matte and painted the suit and shirt. And then I called it good. 